Greetings in the name of Christ and welcome to our Thursday devotional. My name is Reverend Alyssa Connor. Reverend Greg Garris is away on vacation. So we will participate in this devotional together. I invite you to join in prayer. Holy God, open our hearts and minds once again to receive your word, to hear your will, to be filled with your Holy Spirit. In your name we pray, amen. Our devotional today focuses on Psalm 86. Please listen as I read the word. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord. For to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In this day of my trouble, I call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name, for you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love towards me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, the insolent rise up against me. A band of ruffians seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving girl. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the NRSV version, this Psalm is titled Supplication for Help Against Enemies. One of the things that the Presbyterian women have discussed is, are there times when prayers are not okay? Are there times when we shouldn't pray for specific things? Say you have two different sports teams competing against one another and both sides have people on them praying to God for success, then what happens? Now, it's not always that simple. There are times when people pray for things that are even more difficult than two sports teams winning. There are times when nations pray for defeat of other nations. There are times when even we or those in scripture have prayed for the destruction of our enemies. These are all difficult things, but we can be assured that God hears our prayers and also knows how best to answer them even when that answer is no. In scripture, we read time and time again about people praying to God for all sorts of different things. So is there anything you shouldn't ask for? I think definitely there are times when we should reflect about the reasons behind what we are praying for. But perhaps in the act of praying to God, we work through those reasons. Just as very often in the Psalms, the psalmist will begin with turmoil and anger and then work towards celebrating the glory of God, so too this can happen in our prayers. I have talked about this before, but it is one of the things in scripture that I find so inspiring. In the book of Lamentations, you have this crying out to God about all the different things that have gone wrong. It is such an outpouring of frustration and chaos that in fact, even the very form of the Book of Lamentations allows for this outcry. 
Lamentations in the Hebrew is actually an acrostic poem, starting with Aleph, which would be like the letter A, and then going through all of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet two at a time. So for instance, it would be A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, as the verses go through. It goes through all of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and then it reaches this place where everything gets jumbled up and it doesn't follow the pattern anymore. And then at the very end, there is this understanding that it has all been laid at the feet of God. So too our prayers can be, where we lay out all of our chaos, all of our stress and frustrations in every order imaginable, until we are poured out. We have said everything we can from A to Z, all of the prayers that weigh on our hearts, even those things that we are afraid to pray for, or we feel self-conscious about, or we're worried about, or we feel like people would judge us for, we pray them out to God. And God hears us and understands us fully. And we can lay everything at the feet of God. It is a comfort and a joy to know that God hears us and that we can tell God anything. I tell this often to the youth, to the children, but I think adults need to hear it as well. We can tell God anything. And yes, there are times when we need to reflect about why we pray certain things, to reflect about whether our prayers are self-serving, to reflect about whether our prayers are harmful to others, but we still can pour them out to God and allow that time of prayer to be that way of reflection and then give space for the spirit to work in and through us to bring us to a place of love. And for that, I say, thanks be to God, and let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks that we can pour out our prayers to you, our every concern, our deepest fears and resentments. We give you thanks that you hear us in love, that you understand us fully. We give you thanks that you help us work it out, that you help us to know how to love, that you help us to let go of some things that we're holding on to, that you guide us, O oh God. In your name we pray, amen. And may God's peace be with you now and always, amen. <laughs>